In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saints Francisco and Jacinta, Our Lady of Fatima, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. Amen. Welcome to this uh, conference, which is, I think, the last one, but hopefully it will be the like a uh, a goal now to to reach after having uh, presented the message of Fatima as a call to first prayer then call to penance and finally this is the topic today call to consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary we have now to focus our attention on the mystery of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is the very core of Fatima's message. This is actually the, the topic. This is the message. Everything goes into this, this mystery. So the message of Fatima uh, holds at its very heart <coughs> the message, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The heart is the center of a lady's person and mystery, as well as the center of Fatima, uh, the message of Fatima. So we now go through this uh, Marian topic to discover its beauty and, of course, the necessity to understand it and especially to, uh, to put it into action. We have not to leave Fatima without having uh, understood this and without making, again, <coughs> perhaps, but without making a consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So let us understand first why the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the message of Fatima is so central. <coughs> Second, what is the request of the Immaculate Heart of Mary? <clears throat> and finally, the, we can uh, appreciate the, the fact that we have to live according to the request of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So the request is to consecrate ourselves to this Immaculate Heart. First, uh, let us see all, at least, almost all places where the Immaculate Heart of Mary is referred to in the message of Fatima, starting with the angel and then coming to the message of Our Lady. We have already said that it is first the angel presenting the heart of Mary as one thing with the heart of Christ. If you remember, in 1916, the angel came to prepare the three shepherd children for the apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary and said, putting the two hearts together, this, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. So it is the, from the very beginning of this message, private revelation, that the heart of Mary is presented as one and together with the heart of Christ. Then again, a successive apparition, the angel repeated the message, pray, pray very much. The sacred hearts, look, sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary have designs of mercy upon you. So here it is quite clear, the hearts are one, so to say, the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. So to have one heart, possibly, 
because Jesus and Mary are so united to, to be mother and son, son and mother. So their hearts become mysteriously, by, in the work of redemption, one single heart. So here it is already clear, we cannot split Jesus and Mary or be too much frightened to say, mm, I'm too much devoted to Our Lady. This is not good. I have to be devoted to Jesus. No point to say that. Their hearts are so united to be in the mystery of our salvation, one single heart. It is Our Lady who leads you to Jesus. And it is in a certain sense Jesus who leads you to Our Lady to be in her to be, as we will say now, to be in a very safe place where God is. Because there is only one God, uh, sorry, only one place where God can live properly on this earth. There is only one person worthy of this inhabitation. This person is Our Lady, because she is immaculate, yes? You see, her heart is the only worthy place, worthy dwelling place, where God can abide. So only in her we find Jesus. But we can understand this in a minute. Then we come to the message of uh, Our Lady to uh, Lucia. Uh, normally Our Lady was always speaking to Lucia and, uh, and Lucia was able to deal with Our Lady in answering and having a dialogue. And then Lucia had the, the task to report everything to the other two uh, children. So Our Lady uh, came, uh, especially during the second apparition, this is important for the revelation of the centrality of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. During the second apparition, June 1917, Our Lady said, uh, in speaking to Lucia, Jesus wants to use you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart. To those who accept it, I promise salvation, and those souls will be loved by God as flowers. I have place to embellish His throne. So this is the first clear divine will. God, Jesus, wants to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart. In the same apparition, so there is another important revelation of the centrality of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Jesus wants to establish devotion to it, but it is, uh, on the contrary, uh, it is the heart of Mary that has been prepared as a way for you to go to God. In fact, Lucia was a little bit distressed upon hearing the words, this important message. But Our Lady uh, comforted her by saying, she consoled uh, Lucia, saying, I will never leave you. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. You can understand, a very little girl had such a huge mission to carry out for the whole church. She was frightened, but Our Lady said, don't lose heart. You just trust. You Abandon yourself in me, in my Immaculate Heart, because it is my Immaculate Heart that will be your refuge. This is already clear, the meaning of consecration. Consecration is right this, to be in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to abide in that heart, to have a Lady's heart as a place of refuge place where we take refuge, we are saved, we are safe, yes? 
in that holy place. And it is that holy place, the Immaculate Heart, that is the way leading you to God. So Fatima has precisely this revelation, the Immaculate Heart as the way to go to God. This is for Lucia, but this is for each one of us as well. And then uh, we come to July, the apparition of July, which is important for the revelation of the secret made up uh, of three single parts. After having revealed the three parts of the secret, uh, Our Lady uh, taught the three shepherds a very important prayer that you pray, we pray, especially during the day with Mary. Our Lady said, Sacrifice yourselves for sinners and say often to Jesus, especially whenever you make a sacrifice. This is the prayer. O oh Jesus, it is for love of thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You see, there is a kind of progression in this revelation of the importance of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. From the necessity to take refuge into it, we come to understand that we have to repair the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So this is important for us because we consecrate ourselves to Our Lady in order to act accordingly, to be co-workers with Our Lady in this very important work of redemption, we already said, which is now precisely reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It is uh, then the fact that we have to cooperate with Our Lady. And now it is wonderful to see, without any fear, to be too much devoted to Our Lady, that we pray we pray to Jesus to repair the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Is this possible? We pray to Jesus to repair. Should we not do this, the, 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 the other way around, isn't it? We should pray to Mary to repair the sins against the heart of Jesus. How come? We pray to Jesus to repair the sins committed against Mary. But it is quite logic, because they are one heart, they are mother and son, they are completely united. And, of course, if we understand the, the heart of Mary as the dwelling place of God, the dwelling place of the Son of God who came to be incarnate, to become, to become her son, we understand that by repairing the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we repair in a most perfect way the sins against Christ. No other perfect way to repair properly the sins against Christ than repairing the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart. Because if Christ, as it is, abides only in that Immaculate Heart, all sins offending Christ are sins offending and piercing Our Lady's heart. Yes? So we repair the sins against Our Lady in order to repair the sins against Christ, piercing her heart, piercing in her heart tremendously our Lord. But we do it in order to, to do it in the most perfect way, because we are with Our Lady. We repair these sins with Our Lady's heart. Yes? We do this great job of reparation, because it is Our Lady with us, and we uh, are with Our Lady in making this reparation. So, 
no worry about this. We have not to be uh, fearful to say mm, it is too much. It is a way to, to be too much Marian. No, it is a way to be Christian. Yes? Because again, Jesus is in Mary. Jesus is present in her heart because Jesus was made of her. Jesus was made in her womb, in her heart. So, finally, the last reference. There are some others, but the last one reference to the Immaculate Heart is always during the apparition of July. July, by the end, after having revealed the third part of the secret, uh, what Our Lady said, this is the great promise, we look forward to it, isn't it? This is the great, great promise, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the end, what is this end? We don't know. That's right, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Pope will consecrate Russia to me, and so on. But now we see this statement, which is important, in the end. Uh, it is quite difficult to know what is this end, <laughs> but we leave it for eventually for a question. But don't ask this question, because it is difficult. <laughs> My Immaculate Heart will triumph. So, you see, the Immaculate Heart is the triumph of Fatima. Everything is pointing to that heart as the symbol of the triumph of Mary, Our Lady. So, the Immaculate Heart will triumph, which means it is Our Lady who will triumph over all enemy and sin and and because of her triumph, God, who, Jesus, who wishes to establish devotion to that heart, will triumph too, right? So this is the, the, the grace we have in Fatima. This is a special revelation to understand the preciousness of the Immaculate Heart. God has established to triumph through this triumph making Our Lady's heart triumphant. This is the point. So we can also say now that God will triumph as Our Lady will triumph. God has linked His triumph. Christ as the King of all universe has linked his final victory to this triumph. You might ask why? Because this is the way of God. God has chosen this humble way to cast down from their thrones those who are proud of hearts, isn't it? Those who are very focused on themselves and think to be greater even than God. The way of doing, God's way of doing is right this, to choose what is humble. Because there is only one thing that God can do, so to say, <coughs> to humble himself. He cannot do anything greater than himself, isn't it? He, can, he cannot go over the top. He is the top. There is nothing over, above. God can only choose to come down, yeah? yeah? To become a little baby, as he did. And how did, did it? How did he uh, uh, do it? By choosing a lady. By choosing that immaculate heart. And this is the logic, this is the divine, supernatural reason to find the, a very humble but pure heart to be with us. 
This is the poorest way, but the most perfect one, because that way, although humble, <coughs> is the pure and immaculate way to be with us. So in choosing Our Lady, God is, is uh, uh, causing all uh, evil, evil and wicked people to be cast down, to be uh, humbled, actually, in order that the cross, the mystery of the cross, might triumph. So there is only one possibility for God, because He chose it, one possibility to live and to be with us, and one possible way chosen by Him to triumph, which is is uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now uh, we have to understand why the heart, why the heart is so important. And this is very biblical. The heart is a symbolic uh, language when we make reference to the heart, but truly biblical. The heart is very important in the Bible if we make reference to some uh, uh, books, even in the Old Testament, we understand that the heart is the very center of a person. A person, for the Bible, is, is a whole being because of the heart. The person is actually abiding while living in his heart, because the thoughts come from the heart. This is something unusual. A person thinks using the heart and not the mind. This is the biblical language. But also the sentiments, the will, proceed not from the mind, but from the heart. So the heart is the center of the person. When we say heart in the Bible, we mean the very center, the core of a living person. So it is in the heart that man can find God's presence. It is by living properly in his heart that a man can discover the presence of God. And it is by converting the heart to our Lord, to our Lord that we can finally find his presence. For example, the book of Proverbs says, With all watchfulness keep thy heart, because life issued out from it. Life, all life, the spiritual life, material life, everything comes out of it. <clears throat> you remember the teaching of Jesus in the Gospel. It is not what enters, what goes in that make a person impure, it is what comes out. Why? Because everything that comes out comes from the heart, from the inner life. And the inner life is the heart. There is not a precise concept to mean the soul of a man, but the heart is pointing to the inner life of a person. So again, the prophet Ezekiel, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Right this morning we have had the Beatitudes in the Gospel. The central one, one of the central Beatitudes is Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. This is a compendium of all Beatitudes. If your heart is pure, you are able to see God. So, to say that the heart has to be pure means that you person, your whole being, mind, heart, soul, body, feelings, thoughts, desires, everything has to be pure. To say one word, to put all together is your heart has to be pure. So we already understand that when we say Our Lady's heart, we mean her 
being, he person, he uh, uh, mystery, which is concentrated in her heart. So the immaculate heart is a lady's immaculate person. In her heart there is the unity of thoughts, desires, wishes, sentiments, love uh, and obedience, of course. Then we come to Saint Paul, who can help us understand more deeply even the meaning of the heart. Saint Paul is hoping that Christ may dwell by faith where? In your hearts. Ephesians 3, 17. And then we come to Saint Peter, first letter of Peter 3, 15. This is wonderful. But sanctify the Lord Christ in your heart being ready always to satisfy everyone that asks you a reason of that hope which is in you. Sanctify the Lord Christ in your hearts. So we have to live the life of grace by having always our hearts pure. We can sanctify Christ, which means we can live in holiness in order to have Christ with us, His grace, when we keep our hearts free from sin and we keep our hearts always in the state of grace. So since Christ is abiding in our hearts, we have to transform our hearts, to transform them into a living dwelling place for Christ. How can we do it? We have said we start with prayer. Prayer leads to penance. Prayer and penance finally lead to transform our hearts to make it into a home for, for Christ. Yes? So we have spoken about sacrifice. Sacrifice is a beautiful word, we said. Sacrifice is important. Sacrifice is basically this process of transformation of my heart of stone into a heart of flesh, into a heart free from any compromise with sin, in order to cleanse completely this heart and to have Christ in my heart. So I have to, uh, to push away from it all compromise with sin in order to have to be imbued with the presence of Christ, the presence of His grace. Having this said, we can now uh, properly cherish the mystery of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We have to transform our hearts to be able to have Christ in our hearts. Yes? Who is the most perfect heart where Christ is always present? Mary, Our Lady. With her heart, by becoming uh, one heart with her, we can be uh, imbued by that grace by which our hearts are transformed into a dwelling place for Christ. This is the mystery. There is no other way than Mary, than her immaculate heart. Because her immaculate heart is the first and the greatest uh, dwelling place of God. This Immaculate Heart is, is the key to everything, key to eternal salvation. We have a beautiful uh, 
statement of Jacinta before dying. This is, we can say, her testament. The testament of Jacinta, this little girl, nine years old, is right this. I quote, in a short time, now I'm going to heaven. She's speaking to Lucia. You are to stay here and say that God wishes to establish in the world the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She has only one preoccupation, to remind all people of this request. Tell everybody, she says, uh, Jacinta says, that God grants graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and that they must ask them from her. Tell them that the heart of Jesus wishes that by his side should be venerated the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tell them to ask peace through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God has placed in her hands. God, sorry, has placed it in her hands, the peace, the gift of peace. Oh, that I could put into the heart of everybody the flame that I feel burning within my breast and which makes me love so much the heart of Jesus, the heart of Mary. That's beautiful. Yes? Have you got so far the same flame burning within your breast which makes you love so much the heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary. This is our wish, especially at the end of this pilgrimage, to go back home with this flame, inflaming our hearts of this great desire to burn our parishes, in a figurative way, of course. We are not terrorists, but... <laughs> to burn our parish priests with this flame of love. <laughs> and that's a figurative discourse, isn't it? You, you don't take me literally, otherwise... We, we should have this great flame of this to be, uh, to be on fire, yes? With this, this important task, the task to say everybody that God grants graces through the Immaculate Heart. God wishes to save all mankind through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is the request for this time, this moment, this precise moment of the Church. This is the way God chose. This is the way God wants to go through in order to bring everyone into this heart to make Christ triumph over all mankind. Yes? So, we understand the meaning of the heart and then we can understand why devotion to the Immaculate Heart is important. Right? Are you with me? Let's go a little bit further now. Devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary leads directly to the next step, which is what? Yes, but not precisely that. Devotion leads to consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Of course, the goal is Christ, only Christ. But we can be Christ if we are devoted to Mary. But devotion, that's the point now, devotion does not mean something sentimental to say, my dear mother, I love you very much. And then, what about your life? Yes. Devotion is consecration. Do you remember the meaning of consecration? Consecration is, goes always along with sacrifice. There is no 
through consecration without being set apart from things that are profane. Consecration is to be dedicated to the sacred, to be made sacred. And this, this making, this way to be transformed, to be set apart from things and dedicated to God, is a way to transform your own being, your own heart. Yes? To transform yourself and to offer, finally, by this transformation, the sacrifice, a sacrifice of your own being. So the sacrifice is always this offering, this detachment from worldly things, from sin, from the old way of life, to leave it behind in order to put on the new self. The new self is Christ, actually. But this new self is uh, working in us if we are able, by the sacrifice, to transform ourselves. We have to change our minds, our hearts. We have, in one word, to change our hearts, to convert ourselves and to come back to God. So, consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary means right this, to be one with Our Lady, not only ideally, not only by saying beautiful words, but by living this mystery, by making this uh, process working, the process of transformation into a new person. But, of course, it is that it is by giving yourself up, by consecrating yourself to Our Lady, that you accomplish the sacrifice, and by this act of donation, of offering, you are transformed by Our Lady into a new heart. So, in other words, if we give our hearts to Our Lady, if we consecrate our hearts to her, if we say, my dear mother, I am ready now to give to you my heart. It is Our Lady, with her maternal grace, taking this offering and transforming us into a new heart. So if we uh, if we take refuge in her Immaculate Heart, the Immaculate Heart will transform us into a new heart. In other words, she will give us her heart. We will be in her heart. So we will have this refuge, we will be transformed, we will be saved. The Immaculate Heart is the way leading us to God. No fear to go astray or to be focused, to be stuck on a creature, as many can say, instead of going to God. No, it is not the case. It is not to be stuck on a creature. It is to be stuck, actually, in her heart, where Christ is, where the grace is, where God abides. In this way, we become children of Mary. So devotion leads naturally, so to say, to consecration. Let us say something more about consecration. Consecration is the making of a person into a new being, a new heart. That's the reason of consecration, the significance, the, the meaning of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, making a person into a new person, transforming the core of that person into a new being, new heart. Yes? Consecration. Why consecration is vital? Is consecration starting only with Fatima, or is it more ancient than Fatima? It is very ancient. The first the oldest Marian prayer 
is what? That's right. Subtum presidium. Under your patronage, we take refuge. We flee to thee. Yes, dear Mother of God, under your protection, under your wings, we want to take refuge. We want to live under your mantle. This is very ancient to see a lady with her mantle embracing many, many children. This is the, the idea of translating this prayer into a statue, into an image, visible image, to have a lady holding all children under her protection. But this is the first way for Christians to express properly this truth. We can be consecrated to you because you are the mother of God. If we flee under your protection, you will guide us safely to God. So consecration is an ancient practice in the Christian tradition. But now we can understand that consecration is necessary for the time we are living in. Consecration is, is important in order to hasten the salvation of all mankind and to stop the spread of the evil in the world. A lady's heart is the dying, uh, stopping the spread of evil coming from, especially from the ideology of communism. This is the message. If you will do what I am asking for, Russia will be converted. Otherwise, if you do not do what I am asking for, Russia which means that nation, but that precise materialistic ideology will spread its error all over the world, as it happened. Yes? So, consecration of Russia and of mankind, of everybody to Our Lady, uh, means to... Uh, for in order to see the, the necessity for this time means to have something, to have a supernatural aid stopping the spread of evil and to save mankind from despair, from the revolution, from materialism, which is the anti-religion. Yes, people who are materialistic don't care uh, about faith, God, they live as God, uh, where nothing, they don't care. This is the way to fall uh, so easily into damnation, because they want it. They have no idea, because they have rejected it, of God, of supernatural life, of transforming their hearts. So, in order to see the necessity for this time, where we are dominated by a materialistic ideology, which is the first threat to religion and faith, we are called to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart. If we offer ourselves to her, if we take Our Lady's heart, we are preserved from destruction, from this ideology which is unfortunately uh, destroying even the, the, the concept of, the natural concept that, that a man should have of the existence of God. And we are now trying to oppose to God a new creation. We are putting ourselves in the place of God. We are making a new man. We understand what a family should be in the place of God. Is this not materialism? Is this not the outcome of this spread of errors? Coming from a precise idea of man, a precise 
hatred against family as formed by man and woman who become one flesh as the image of Christ and the church, the bride and the groom. Yes, is this not the materialism flowing from, especially from this precise concept of man? Man is his flesh. Man is what he eats. Nothing else. This ideology is leading to, uh, to transform, to have a new creation. Man, in our society, wants to be the creator of mankind. Is this not a sin? Very grievous sin. So, what to do? You see, God has foretold us this danger we would have gone into and he said if you want to uh, uh, if you want to be uh, saved redeemed uh, from this this danger rescued from this uh, calamity you have to accept something very humble very easy to do to consecrate yourself to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But I do not understand why such an opposition to this. Why is it so difficult to understand this? Because we are proud. We think that we are not able to defeat such a, an emperor of evil with a very simple means, which is a consecration to Our Lady. We think that we only need the atomic bomb to be ready to face the upcoming evil in the world. If we have got it, we are strong enough to challenge everyone. This is not the way God thinks, isn't it? Because I said it before, God is humble. Because God is God. There is nothing above him. And he lights to, to guide us into this understanding. The only possible way to be saved, to be on God's side, is to be humble. And to accept something which is very humble. The rosary, the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So, devotion leads to consecration. Finally, consecration leads to what? Let's see. What? Yes. Salvation. And something more? Devotion, consecration, triumph. Victory. Yes? The true one. Not the victory of weapons and <laughs> atomic bombs. The victory of God. The victory of love to be safe in God's love forever. Yes? And Our Lady said, consecration will lead to triumph. It will be the effect, the right effect of consecration. Victory is granted if there is this humble means put into action. Consecration to my Immaculate Heart. Because God wants to save mankind with this very humble means, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this is the triumph of God as the cross, yes, is the triumph of Christ. The cross, which is, uh, this is an instrument of torment, of the way the slaves were crucified in the Roman Empire. But the cross in Christ became the instrument of salvation. That's the same. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart is, goes parallel to it, to the cross, because it is the humble way for God to triumph, to win over all his enemies, to defeat definitively 
sin and to make a room for love. So if we enter this heart, we enjoy this victory. No victory without entering this heart. Do you want to be victorious? Yes. Yes. Triumphant? Yes. You have to make the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is very simple. This does not cost too much. <laughs> it does actually, it does spiritually cost a lot because you have to sacrifice yourself. We have to. To accept, especially to be humble, to accept this very humble instrument and to give up a way of thinking which is not God's. It is demanding spiritually, but it is powerful. It is the only way to be victorious with God. So we wish to be victorious with God. We want to consecrate ourselves to Our Lady and we wish with Our Lady's grace to persevere in this Marian consecration. Last word before we end up. Consecration <coughs> is possible. Consecration is biblical. Don't, don't be afraid to say, I want the Bible. We have, everyone wants the Bible, because the Bible is the Word of God. But not only Bible, not Bible alone, that's the point. Bible with sacred tradition, otherwise we cannot understand even what is written in the Bible. And the temptation is always to choose what we like. <coughs> Bible alone means what I like, not what the Church is teaching. But this is too easy to say uh, what I like. Consecration is biblical. The most important text, uh, text of consecration is the Gospel of St. John. You remember chapter 19? Uh, Our Lady at the foot of the cross and Jesus dying, hanging on the cross. While dying, what Jesus said? This is the testament of love after the testament of love of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus gave us two testaments, basically. Holy Eucharist and his mother. They go together. Do this in memory of me and son, behold your mother. Take this mother as your own mother. And woman, behold your son. This is the testament flowing from that testament, the first, the Eucharistic testament, goes parallel with this one, the mother. If you want to be faithful to the Holy Eucharist, you have to take into your life Our Lady. This is your mother. If you take your mother, you understand the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. Do this in memory of me. There are two commands, actually. There are two... Uh, uh, precise commands of Christ. Do this to his apostles. This is your mother. Behold, your mother. So this is the text to understand the necessity of consecration to Our Lady. It is Jesus presenting us his mother and saying, take this mother as your own. This is my mother and in this precise moment my mother is becoming your own mother. So, take Our Lady into your own life. When we say John took Our Lady into his house, this is quite, uh, this is a translation which does not match properly the original text, especially the Latin version, which is uh, saying that John actually took Our Lady into his own home, but not sheltering Our Lady. This is not the point. Our Lady was not in need only of a, to be sheltered, but John took Our Lady into his inner home, into his life, into his soul. 
he made a place for her into his heart. Yes? John took a lady into his heart. John gave his heart to a lady. He was consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. John, the Evangelist, is the first to be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Lord of God, pray for us sins, till of our death. Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint John, Saints Francisco and Jacinta, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, here we are. Now we have got some time for questions and possible answers. What does consecration practically mean? The first question. Of course, consecration does not only mean to say a formula, but the formula is necessary to say a precise consecration formula, prayer, to be repeated every day wholeheartedly and uh, mindful to it, yes? But practically, to live consecration means to live a life of grace. With Our Lady we have to defeat our enemy, which is sin. To live a life of grace, to go to confession peri periodically, to leave all bad stuff behind and forget about it and start a new Christian life, proper Christian life. Then pray the rosary every day and sacrifice. What is practically the meaning of sacrifice? Offer, make or whatever you can a sacrifice. You are working so hard and you can easily lose your patience. Try not to lose your patience for the love of Our Lady. When you want to say something, zip it. <laughs> zip it. And treasure the silence. Silence is a sacrifice. When you want to be ghost to, to do some gossip, zip it. When you want to, to watch soap operas all the afternoon long, switch off your TV and pray the rosary. When you want to read bad stuff, these, these uh, magazines full of impurity and nudity, give it up. Pray the rosary. You see how many sacrifices we can do. Many. <clears throat> Starting with very simple things. You're always very upset with your husband coming late and try to be patient. And your husband is always upset with you because you don't cook properly the dinner for him. <laughs> your, hus your husbands try to be patient and to offer it up. Try to wash up the dishes to help in the kitchen. And yes, instead of blaming, putting your blame on your wife only. You see how many sacrifices, many, starting with simple things. And then, little by little, we have to improve the sacrifice and finally to go to, to be ready for martyrdom. <laughs> this is something great, but only possible by grace, not by our own strength. Actually, we have to say England is our lady's dowry and there is a great, great potential to become even more Marian. Unfortunately, the Marian devotion has been put away, aside, since the Reformation. Because the Reformation at the beginning wanted to preserve the purity of faith, Harry VIII wanted to to preserve the Catholic faith, although he put himself in the place of the Pope to be the head of the Church, but little by little, giving into it, he became 
even more relaxed about faith and his successors were ready to embrace Protestantism even more largely. Even Harry VIII, little by little, became more flexible, more accustomed to have Protestants coming into the, into the land, into the uh, kingdom. And basically, uh, uh, if you see the 39 articles of the Church of England, the most uh, important parts rela relating to justification, faith, baptism, they take almost everything from Luther's point of view. So the sola fide, only faith, the problem of concupiscence and, sanctify, uh, concupiscence and original sin mixed up which become the same thing as Luther, Luther uh, did. And also this way of venerating Our Lady, venerating the saints, which for, uh, for Luther was something uh, very bad, obscuring the only mediator Christ. Little by little, this understanding was introduced even into UK. And, uh, and so devotion to Our Lady this, this great Marian presence diminished little by little. But there is, the root is there. Yes. If we scrap the surface of this water and we go a little bit deeper down, we understand the great Marian, uh, the great Marian soul of UK. And the mission, I think, of people living in UK is to do our best to bring people back to this devotion. But thanks be to God, I, uh, the, the country was consecrated recently to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, last February. Uh, Cardinal Nichols uh, consecrated uh, UK to the Immaculate Heart. And this compared to other, to other countries is something great. Other countries haven't done anything like this so far in order to celebrate even the centenary of Our Lady of Fatima. So you see, there are potentials, there are uh, possibilities hidden actually, but the work of those who are consecrated to Our Lady is uh, meant right to do that, to bring this soul, Marian soul of UK, back into life. That's your task. Yes? Don't be afraid. First of all, okay. First of all I want to ask if we can consecrate our families, especially our children, to the Immaculate Heart of memory. Yes. And also, I just want to say, tell a little story few years ago, my daughter was 16 then, and in their school there were some forms sent home to sign because they think young people are being sexually active these days. So, but giving them a certain injection, mm. they will, mm. they can have sex, so to speak. So I got the phone and put it in the bin. <laughs> and uh, I went to a direct line, a lady. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> This is the situation that I'm not signing this form and I consecrate my daughter to her. You didn't sign it. They didn't sign Very it. Very good. I prayed anyway. And they sent a second form, put it in the bin with the direct line, our lady. <laughs> and uh, thank be to God, she did exactly what I asked her. Very good. I asked her to protect my daughter's virginity and she did. And she, she's still doing it. Amen. Beautiful testimony of the effectiveness of consecration to our lady. You see, so the question, if the question is, can you can, of course, and this is the, the right explication of this, uh, this, this powerful, this power of the consecration. Consecration is, can be made on behalf of your family, on behalf of your children. Of course, it is much more effective when the person is making it. But you as a mother who has this responsibility for your children, you can, I would say you must, in a certain sense, do it in order to preserve your children and to wish them all good, possible good.
Um, could you give us some advice on food fasting, Father? What we should be doing? Fasting? For food. You can give up what you like most. This is the first penance. You like a lovely cup of tea, you give it up. Or you, you like it now, now. You wait a little bit. If you want to do some more, you can also find, of course, on fried fish on Fridays. But nowadays fish is more expensive than meat. You eat a very poor fish, not sophisticated. You eat tuna fish, yes, which is very poor. You have to be careful. You eat veg, potatoes and, and tomatoes and uh, rice, white rice, without anything else. But, of course, for some, white rice is delicious. But, Father, uh, one of the things that I sometimes find a little bit um, difficult is trying to concentrate when I'm growing the rosary. Perhaps, would it be better if I sort of pause for some moments and then perhaps do a short meditation on the mysteries? Would that be helpful? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think this is a very good thing to do, to have a pause in between mysteries and also to meditate more on the mystery, to read something about the mystery in order to be more focused on the mystery you pray through the Hail Marys, while the Hail Marys go on. And there is another way to be more concentrated while praying the Rosary which is <clears throat> to try to figure out the mystery with your imagination. Since it is the imagination wandering away and going there and uh, here and uh, back home thinking of that person coming back to me, you see the, the, the imagination is a crazy person wandering everywhere. So you have to, ma to, uh, to make the imagination very busy. That's the only way to preserve it from wandering. In order to have the imagination busy during your prayer, you have to imagine the mystery. Yes? So to figure it out with your mind, your imagination more, so you meditate on the Annunciation. With your mind, which is very capable to, try to figure out the moment when the angel came and spoke to Our Lady, figure out the grotto of Nazareth. So you can see with your imagination the angel, you can see Our Lady kneeling, and the dialogue, yes? So while you pray, you have this image in front of you, in your mind, in your imagination, and you, uh, you go on praying, but thinking of the mystery. So, this is, I think, this is a very good help to, to pray and not to be distracted. Yes, when our Lord is exposed, you have to pray in His presence before our Lord. You try to avoid to go somewhere else. And to, of course, it is not <clears throat> a sin to go and to kneel before a lady's statue, but especially during the day with Mary, you can split the two moments. There is one moment dedicated, focused on the statue, on the mystery of Fatima. The second part is the Eucharistic moment, when you have to be focused on the Blessed Sacrament. In that moment, you try to be focused only on Jesus. <clears throat> but it is Our Lady, I think, leading you to Jesus, to that moment. You start with her, and with, with her, you go to Jesus, you kneel, before him and you stay in his presence. So we can ask Our Lady to understand more this, this moment of adoration before our Lord. Because of course our Lord is not a statue. Our Lord is real, really present in the Blessed Sacrament. There are different opinions about this consecration. We can have different opinions. It is not a dogma of faith, of course. We can see historically what happened briefly. The very first consecration in answering to this call of Fatima was made by Pius XII, 1942. 
Pius XII is actually the Pope of Fatima. You know why? Because he was consecrated bishop on the 13th of May 1917, when Our Lady came to Fatima. So he is indeed the Pope of Fatima. And he answered to this message. The previous Pope was asked to do the consecration, but he didn't. Even Pius XI didn't. The very first uh, response was Pius XII's one, who made this consecration, but not according to the formal request of Our Lady. He did not mention the name of Russia for diplomatic reasons, we can say, in order to avoid some, some bad outcome after this. this. But with Pope Pius XII, we have a beautiful gift we have the Mass in honor of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. He gave to, to the whole Church this important liturgical instrument, the Mass and the Breviary, uh, the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. From Pius XII, the second Pope who responded to the appeal of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is John Paul II. You see, there is a gap, big gap, between Pius XII and John Paul II, who made this consecration of Russia formally in union with all bishops around the world in 1984. But again, formally speaking, the name of Russia precisely was not mentioned. This is the point. Again, because he was counseled not to say precisely Russia for fear of some, I don't know, for fear of maltreatment of Christians under the communist empire. In order to preserve, as also Pius XII did, in order to preserve the people from being uh, tortured or persecuted much more, the Pope avoided to say, to say Russia. And John Paul II did the same. Of course we can say, but if you trust Our Lady, you can, you can be successful. But you know, the Pope is the Pope. The Pope has to think of all possible uh, outcomes when he does something such important. So, strictly speaking, the consecration was made, but not according to the, formally, according to the request. This is the reason Cardinal Burke recently, two weeks ago, has asked for consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If we go to this book, uh, we read in this book that uh, there is a revelation of Sister Lucia to Father Condor. Condor was the postulator of the beatification of two little shepherds, Francisco and Jacinta, in a private conversation. Sister Lucia said to Father Condor that the consecration was made, but it was too late. This is another version that we have. If we go back to the memoirs of Sister Lucia, we already read that a lady starting with 1929, approximately, was already complaining with Sister Lucia, chase the Pope up, because this is important, I want this consecration. And Sister Lucia was writing to Pius XII, lamenting this. A lady is asking for this consecration, what are you doing? And, uh, but in these memoirs we can already read the outcome, it will be like the King of France. You remember this? Also the King of France had a delay. He was waiting and he did not do the consecration of France to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. He did it while imprisoned, but was late. In fact, the, the monarchy was cast already down the, the, the king was slaughtered and the, the ideology of the Enlightenment came through. It will happen as for the king of France. 
And this, this, this is uh, quite clear to understand why, in any case, unfortunately, the dyeing, divine heavenly dyeing, yeah. did not work to stop the spread of communism. Mm -hmm. The communism has unfortunately spread yeah. the errors throughout the world, not because Our Lady did not uh, accomplish her promise, but because we were not uh, obedient and we were not doing it precisely according to, to that request. But there is always time to do it again. So the question I think now is this, should we still consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart? Yes. Pray in general. Yes. Yes. I think the first thing is to understand what prayer properly is. When you pray, you speak to God. So if you are aware of this, you do it properly. You, you are recollected, you try to be in His presence, with your mind focused on that prayer. Uh, whether you say prayers, the rosary, or you have meditation, which is more the use of the intellect to reflect on topic, mystery, you are always focused on God. So, the, the very important thing to do when you pray is to think of what you are doing in that moment. You are in God's presence. So, make sure that you are in God's presence. <coughs> Turn off your TV, radio, iPhone, earphones, WhatsApp, uh, uh, everything. Yes, turn everything off and be and the best, the best place to be in God's presence is, of course, to be in, in, the, in the presence of the Holy Eucharist beside the tabernacle, if you can. Otherwise, also your house, your room, close the, close the door behind you and pray in silence. You know, the most difficult thing to do when we pray is to be silent. This is the most difficult thing. So we have to understand the importance of silence to pray. I just, I'm reading now a beautiful book, Cardinal Sarris, The Power of Silence, just came out in English. Try to read this book, it's a wonderful book. You can see the deep spiritual life of this Cardinal, Sarah. Cardinal Sarah, or they say Sarah. They have many, way to, yes. many ways to say cardinal, but you understand, yes. the African cardinal, yes. who is a very, who is a, a Benedictine, or Cartusian, living in Rome. Yes. Is, he has a very strong spiritual life. You can tell yes. from the pages he writes about the importance of silence. So he has written a book so thick to speak about silence. <laughs> but it is a wonderful book that you can read and, and understand what silence is and how silence is precious for prayer. When you light a candle, normally candle is the, the symbol of a prayer. <clears throat> you pray by lighting it as a sign of your prayer. And also when you walk out of the church, your prayer is still there, yes? This is the reason you light a candle. You make your prayer permanent, so to say, as long as it is possible in the church. But of course, if you, if you want to put into it also this meaning, to offer sacrifice, and the symbol of it is the candle, this is wonderful. I think this is the clue we have got now, to offer, to light a candle as a symbol of prayer and sacrifice. Very good. So uh, it's regarding the importance of the consecration nowadays. Uh, back in 1923, all the bishops, all the Portuguese bishops, gathered here in Fatima to do what uh, Our Lady asked, so to consecrate Portugal to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And uh, by that means they were, were able to postponed the entrance of communism in Portugal for 50 years, by 50 mm. years, meaning communism was about to enter in Portugal and he came only 50 years later. Mm. 
At the same time, uh, with that consecration, they avoided Portugal going to war, the Second World War. That's right. That's beautiful. You see the, uh, the effects of this consecration. That's why consecration is truly despised and undermined, because it is effective. It is powerful, very much. We have, we have learned that the Portuguese people say for one, uh, for only for 50 uh, beats, 50 Hail Marys, they say o terzo, which is only one third of the rosary. But when we say, do you pray the rosary, we mean, with the Portuguese people, do you pray 150 rosaries? So we should, to, we should pray 150 Hail Marys, which is one rosario. One rosary is made up by three mysteries, joyful, uh, sorrowful, glorious. This is the traditional way. But now we have also the luminous, added by who? St. Paul II. Saint. So, Saint, if you want to be very good, if you want to pray the rosary, and when we now mean rosary, we say, we mean four, uh, four mysteries. Four, so, 200 Hail Marys. I try to, yes, every day. Sometimes, unfortunately, I'm not able to, but at least I have to pray three. Three, one rosario, three mysteries. But we friars and sisters are asked to pray as many as possible, because we have a spirituality from Father Pio, St. Pio of Pietrelcina, praying continuously the rosary, and uh, we try to pray as many as possible. Uh, I do sometimes, uh, yes, no, when I, when I can, yes, you do. Otherwise I do include also the seven sorrows of Our Lady, the seven joys of Our Lady, the seven, we have now the seven glories of Our Lady. Do you know the seven glories? Ask the sisters for this. You can have a book explaining it. The seven. This is a beautiful rosary. So there are many ways to fill up your rosario, right? We let people. We do. We don't do all the mysteries, but day after day, according to the days that we see us. Yes.